Michigan International Speedway, home track to the Detroit Big Three, home today to the Carfax 250, the NASCAR Nationwide Series, the second event for the next generation car. Actually, it's quite a busy sports scene in Michigan. The Maize and Blue practicing up the road in Ann Arbor. The Lions play their preseason opener tonight. The Tigers are in a pennant race. But here at the track, it's all about the fast cars and the men and women who will wield them. 43 drivers ready to go on this two-mile track, one to take home the trophy at the end of the day. Let's go trackside for the opening ceremony. Delivering today's invocation, Pastor Doug Bradshaw from Williamston Free Methodist Church. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for this great day to go racing. We ask that you would protect each driver and each crew member. We ask that you would protect and guide those men and women who defend our freedom, both in this country and around the world. And today, God, we pray for all the first responders, those men and women who risk their own lives to come to our aid. And we pray for those six Detroit firefighters who today are recovering from their injuries yesterday sustained. Be with them. We praise you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, for our national anthem, please welcome Grand Rapids, Michigan's Mike Quick. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming then the rocket's red glare the bombs burst So as the drivers begin to buckle in, let me mention again the weather. There is a 40% chance of a shower or a thunderstorm through the day. We'll keep an eye on it and keep you posted if uh, weather could get to affecting this race. Getting set for the engines to fire at Michigan next. Carfax 250 at Michigan is brought to you by Carfax. Free at your used car dealer. Just say, show me the Carfax. And Nationwide Insurance. Enter this code at codespotter.com for a chance to win a Roush Ford Mustang. The Michigan International Speedway in the Rolling Irish Hills, where the second race for the next generation NASCAR Nationwide Series car is about to begin. The Dodge Challenger, Ford Mustang, Chevy Impala, and Toyota Camry all shined up and ready to let those ponies run around this two-mile track. Pony cars, muscle cars, whatever you want to call them, they look great. They race great at Daytona, and we're expecting a great race today here at Michigan. Question is, we just can't exactly tell you how it's going to unfold <laughs> because the element of the unknown is going to be big in this one. We do know, though, that our three men in the booth are all ready to bring you the unknown. Marty Reed, Andy Petrie, and uh, four-time Michigan winner Dale Jarrett. Gentlemen, you have answers to some of these questions? Well, we're going to try. As uh, Alan, we take a look at the top eight qualifiers. Six are nationwide regulars. We haven't seen that in an awfully long time. 
Well, Marty, this car is supposed to be the great equalizer, and so far it looks like it may be. Uh, if you're not a Joe Gibbs team, you wanted this to happen. I mean, they, they have really figured that old car out really good, and, and now that we've got this new car, some other teams have a little bit of hope that they can go in there without having any notes uh, to, to go by and nobody having any, that they can have a, a car that can go out here and win. Yeah, it'd be great to see these young guys be able to stay up there all day long and, and race hard with this new car. I think it's been very intriguing to listen during the Cowdown Show and see how many of these guys really don't know what to expect with this that should be fun for us but there is a big difference between two laps of qualifying and 125 in the race what's going to unfold uh, i think experience is going to uh, play out to be the the one thing that these guys aren't going to be able to overcome maybe in doing that you see guys like carl edwards uh, kevin harvick kyle bush and our, our pole sitter brad keselowski who have that experience to get it done i think we look at them being back up front again and, you know, these, we've got a bunch of guys that can, that can win. Uh, and, and guys, some young guys like Trevor Bain and uh, Colin Brown and those guys, I, I feel like this might be the best opportunity for Trevor Bain to get a win. All right, let me put you on the spot. Who has the best finish? We have an 18-year-old Ryan Truex. We have uh, Colin Brown at age 21, Trevor Bain at 19. Who gets the best finish out of those Already three? went. <laughs> I think it's Trevor Bain. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to agree. Trevor Bain, he's been doing an awfully good job in that race car. I'd look for him to be up front all day. Well, and one other person, obviously, a lot of fans around the country be watching will be Danica Patrick. As you know, she's going to be starting a little bit further back in 33rd position. So all the questions about to get answered as we're about to get ready to get this race underway here at Michigan International Speedway. There are the 43 cars that made it through qualifying, even though it did take a little longer because of all the technical ramifications. Let's go trackside right now. And now, race fans, here were the most famous words in motorsports. Your Grand Marshals, Mike Stam and Saving Abel. Driver. Driver. An interesting way to give the command by the group, Saving Able, and our in-race reporter, well, the guy who picked up right where he left off last year, Brad Keselowski, won this race. Remember, he did it on a last lap pass. He won the pole in Daytona for the new car. It's his fifth of the year, eighth of his career. He's going to be our in-race reporter, and let's talk to him, DJ. Hey, Brad, Dale Jarrett, the ESPN, you have a copy? Yes, sir. Okay, buddy, you said in the countdown show for him to ask you a question. You need to be ready to answer it. And David in Tampa, Florida asked, this being the second time you drive the new Nationwide Series car, how difficult do you think it will be to go from Daytona to Michigan? Well, definitely a difficult transition. You know, uh, the one thing about Michigan, though, is it's a little bit of a drag track. And uh, Daytona, of course, is a lot of a drag track as far as what it takes to be fast. So uh, some carry over, but not all. The real test is going to be when we get to the Richmonds and those places. Uh, but then here again at Michigan, as the tires fall off, it's going to be about handling. So we're really going to see the best cars show up after about 15 to 20 laps on their tires. Hey, Brad, we saw a great finish last year in this race, one I know that you're very fond of. But not knowing exactly what you can and can't do with this car, can we anticipate maybe you getting back and seeing how easily it's going to be to pass and where you make can make that pass? Or are you just plan to lead all 125 laps? Well, I think if you can lead every lap, that's what you need to do. You, you can kind of dictate the race when you're up front. Uh, you can dictate pit strategy, and you can stay out of trouble. So if we can, I'll keep my discount tire Dodge up front every lap. Okay, buddy. Good luck with that plan. Have a great day. And Andy's going to talk to your crew chief, Paul Wolf. Hey, Paul. Andy Petrie in the booth. Have you got us? No, loud and clear, Andy. Hey, Paul, if, if Brad's not able to keep that car up front all day and you need to make an adjustment, exactly how will you adjust this new car? No, it's definitely going to be a learning day for us. Um, you know, it's going to take a little different adjustment probably than the old car, but um, just really excited to uh, to have this new Dodge Challenger. Uh, we're two for two here in qualifying. We just got to uh, we got to work hard all day and uh, try to close the deal here and get us a victory lane. Okay, Paul. Good luck today. Thanks for talking to us. All right. Thanks, Andy. 
And our over-the-wall reporter today is going to be Rick Yeomans. He's the rear tire changer in the 01 for Mike Wallace. There he is. Hey, Rick, got a question for you. Any unique characteristics on this new car that affect you guys down on pit road? Well, actually, we have a lot more room on these cars. There's a five-inch longer wheelbase, more room for the fueler, nice wide-open wheel openings. Uh, as soon as we get used to these longer studs, I think they're going to get quick. All right, very interesting. You be safe down there. Have a great day. Thanks, Thanks for you too. talking to us. There's Mike Wallace as he's getting ready to roll out as the cars have just begun to roll off pit road and we'll step aside and when we come back we'll get this race underway here at michigan well last week we we're on the 2.45 mile road course of watkins glen and this week well we're going to shift locations get back onto the ovals as we zoom in on brooklyn michigan and there's the unique characteristics of michigan international speedway and across the top of the screen, we'll put across the starting grid, and obviously it's the first Dodge pole here at Michigan, and there have been no repeat pole winners in 19 races. And there's young 18-year-old Ryan Truex on the outside of row number one. Johnny Chapman was the only car that did not qualify. Three are going to the rear. The 66 of Stephen Wallace and 07 of Danny Eflin for engine changes. And the 28 of Kenny Wallace for unapproved adjustments. Here are our onboard cameras. Danica Patrick, Justin Allgaier, Colin Brown, Kyle Busch looking for win number 10. Brad Keselowski from the point. Kevin Harvick, Carl Edwards, and Stephen Wallace. Let's uh, get our final update from Pit Road. Doc, you're up. Yeah, thank you, Marty. We've established it's only the second time these nationwide cars have ever run here. But uh, And although they were here all day Thursday for practice, one thing they didn't do is run together in large groups. So the big question in the garage area, what's going to happen when they cluster? That's an engineering term for getting everyone together in the draft. When they get a big group in the draft here today, will they snap loose or will they be very, very tight and hard to turn? We're all going to find out together. Vince? Well, normally there's one thing you know about a nationwide race, and that's the guy you've got to beat is Kyle Busch. He's won nine times this season, and he's won six of the last eight. But Busch has struggled a little bit here this week from wicked tight to wicked loose. And in qualifying, they were on the splitter a little bit, and they qualified 10th quickest. Crew Chief Jason Ratcliffe just told me we've got to be careful with that splitter. We're going to take a look at it right away early in the race. Mike? Inspiration. It's certainly something the 60 team and Carl Edwards have today. Just two weeks after his plane crash, team owner Jack Roush is back at the racetrack. In fact, he addressed the team last evening during a dinner, during which crew chief Drew Blickensdurfer, just out of concern, approached him and asked him simply, how are you, Jack? Jack's response, how's the race car? The priority still very much to win here. And good news for Blickensdurfer, he was able to tell Roush, the car is real good, Dave. And, Mike, what does Joey Logano know for sure? Well, he knew it was going to be a late night for his crew chief, Kevin Kidd, as he went to work on ideas to make a race car better that wasn't as good as everybody else's in practice. Now, you heard Joey in Countdown say it was better based on the qualifying laps, but he still wasn't quite sure exactly what he's got with this quote-unquote whole new package. But if you want to do the math, at Daytona, he qualified the new car 10th and picked up eight positions to finish second. Here, he qualified ninth. Minus eight. That'd be number one, Marty. And while we've got a brief moment, all three of us up topside here also want to welcome back Jack Roush. I mean, it was great to see him around the garage area. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, it's a fixture that we all uh, want to see back around for many years to come. Hey, concerned about his race cars. Well, that's right. <laughs> always is. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at the track facts because, as we said, we're going to go 125 laps here. That's 250 miles. Pit road speed, 55 miles an hour. The pit window, somewhere between 41 to 44 laps. And there's the banking in the corners. 18 degrees. We talked about young Colin Brown, 21 years old. Let's listen in on his communications. Man, thank you everyone for all the hard work. I know this week wasn't easy. A lot of effort by a lot of people. I really appreciate all the work you guys have done. Thanks to all the Conway Freight guys for coming out and supporting us. This is going to be a great race for us. I know qualifying up front makes our life a lot easier. So uh, I sure appreciate all the effort. I wouldn't be driving anybody else's car than you guys. I love driving for you. Thank you. Well, the Roush Fenway team has an outstanding record here in all three touring series, a total of 20 wins. So they know how to get the job done, and that young man, again, very appreciative of all the hard work and effort it takes each and every week by these teams to get them out here and give them a good car. Cars heading into turn number four. Remember last year, a last lap pass by Brad Keselowski to take the win. It was a hometown victory for him. His 
Birthplace, Rochester Hills, where he grew up just 92 miles northeast of here at Michigan International Speedway. You're on board with him. And how big is the lump in Ryan Truex's throat right now at age 18? All he sees in front of him is wide open track and to his left, the points leader in the NASCAR Nationwide Series as they come down towards the starting line. The 23rd race of the 2010 season, the Carfax 250 is green. Oh, we're going to try three wide already. That's Menard on the low side. Kyle Busch through the middle gets past Menard. Now he's trying to go past Trevor Bain. Remember, he started 10th. Look at this. He is coming fast. Perfect example of what these guys have been talking about. This draft work. And there's Kyle Busch all the way to the bottom going for that fifth spot. Menard says, I got to try and catch up. And he can't do it. You see Justin Allgaier caught in the middle also. It's kind of like Daytona if you get caught in the middle on that back straightaway. He just went straight backward. Carl Edwards trying to find a spot. Trevor Bain's in a very uncomfortable position. He's in the middle of that. These guys are right now are in a situation with these cars they have not been in. They have no idea how they might react. That's not stopping them from trying a lot of stuff early on. First lap, if it stays like this, this is going to be a great race. Joey Logano trying to get underneath the 60 of Carl Edwards. There's Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Here comes the 11 of Brian Scott. Well, look at that draft. You see it, the 62 car, Brendan Gone, just really closed the gap. Now they're three wide getting in the corner. That's Paul Menard on the low side. And on the high side, the number one of Ryan Newman. See, Paul Menard was able to pull out from behind those two cars going into the corner and then make the pass on both of them before the exit of turn four. On board with Kevin Harvick there for a moment. Harvick uh, in 17th oh. right now. A little Whoa, contact, contact there. Yeah. See how rough the racetrack was right there in the, on the front straightaway. Ryan Newman's car bounced really hard. These cars don't have bump stops, so they, they oh, oh, oh. hits a wall, too. So he's coming off two. Got contact twice now, and the right side of the car is saying, ouch. You heard Rusty Wallace talk about how durable these cars are where they are in the Sprint Cup Series. We'll find out just how much so here in the Nationwide Series. I'm sure Ryan's uh, crew chief, Nick Harrison, saying, hey, don't try and knock the wall down yet. Let's go back. Here's the first contact with Ryan. Yeah, I think right there what you're trying to do is just move up a little bit to take some air away from that car and, and get him to crack the throttle. See, then he lost the nose a little bit coming out of turn two, being right on the bumper of Paul Menard. That got him into the safer barrier. It's a nice square hit, though. It looks like it might be okay if he doesn't have a tire rub. And it looked like Allgaier was having a bit of a contact issue there as well as he was following Newman. And Newman's slowing down. He may possibly have a little more damage than what it looks like. You're driving at a high rate of speed coming off there. You can see the side fast in quite a bit. Doc? Yeah, he's called in a moment ago, thinks he's got a right side tire going down. You saw the contact both first and second, and now Ryan Newman will bring that car on the pit road for an unscheduled pit stop here on lap number five. He said, I think i got a car that can contend for the win, but right now he is on pit road, and they're going to change two right side tires. Yeah, he has won here twice and came from 38th place to do it, but now he's going to have his work cut out for him. We can also tell you that uh, Kevin LePage has taken his car. He's first to park it. Willie Allen has also come to pit road. He is still getting service on pit road. Out on the track, there you saw for a moment the battle between all five of those cars. You got the 32 of Reed Sorensen leading this pack. Let's go on board with Kevin Harvick. Well, Kevin Harvick's had one of the best cars in practice all week here. And uh, I'm surprised to see him qualify that far back, so it's not a surprise to see him coming forward. Remember when uh, Kyle Busch started in 10th? Well, that is the battle right now for fifth place. And Vince, uh, what's the latest on the 18? Well, Kyle Busch said that he likes this place, but he felt like the first five laps in a run were going to be the key because that's when you had to make your move. And you saw Kyle make that move right out of the gate. He picked up five spots in the first couple of laps, but it was a collective sigh of relief here in the pit box for Kyle Busch's team. They thought, as I mentioned in the open, that they might have had a splitter that was dragging the ground, and they thought that was going to be an issue for them early on. When they saw Kyle make those moves, smiles crept across the faces of the crew here in the pit box of the 18th. Let's give you a quick update. Danica Patrick started 33rd. There you see her battling with Tony Raines. That is 29th and 30th in your screen. Biggest mover of the race. Remember, Stephen Wallace had to go to the rear for an engine change. He has picked up 21 spots. Started 40th. One of the three cars to go to the rear. He is up to 19th. Doc? 
He climbed in the car, was putting the belts on. I leaned in the window and said, what's it going to be like today? He said, I got to go to the back because I got an engine change, as you said, Marty. He said, but I am going to get there today. He said, it's my dad's birthday. I haven't won in this series. What better day to win it than today to give back to my dad who's done so much for me? He said, I'm going to the front. Tell you what, I'd rather have a win than a pair of socks and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd go with the win any time. Don't you think, Brad? I hear you, brother. <laughs> Darn. Darn. And we picked out a real nice pair of socks for you, too, Rusty. Hey, Stephen Wallace ranks second in points right now, earned over the last four races. Only 21 points behind Brad Keselowski during that stretch. And he won here back in 2005 in an ARCA race. There's your top five at the Carfax 250 at Michigan. Don't forget to go to Goodyear.com to show your thanks and help support our troops. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Back here at Michigan International, Brad Keselowski leads by 3.3 seconds over Ryan Truex. That's what it looks like from above. Let's update you on four cars behind the wall. Josh Wise, Danny Eflin, Kevin LePage, and Willie Allen all listed as off. Ryan Newman's back out on the track. He is one lap down. As we drift a little bit further back through the field, we've got some great battles going on. There is Trevor Bain. He's got his hands full right now with the 62 of Brendan Gone and also the 12 of Justin Allgaier. That is 11th, 12th, and 13th on the racetrack. And right behind them is Kevin Harvick, a guy that we thought would be moving to the front, but we've been watching his car, especially during the break. And it's been a little wicked out there. Let's take a look and show you what, ha what we mean. He's an easiest draft to catch this group. It's up to him, but it looks like his car's just too loose. Outside. Makes a little contact there with the car, Volga. Well, he hit him on the side. Now he hits him in the back. <laughs> yeah, I think he might have thought that was a uh, little bit of uh, let you know that he didn't appreciate. Maybe he thought the 12 got into him. Vince? Well, hey, guys, we're not the only ones who are surprised that the 33 hasn't been coming to the front as quickly as, as we expected. Spoke with Ernie Cope earlier uh, today about the way this weekend has gone for them, and he used the word extremely well. I mean, it went so smooth, he said that he's just waiting for something to happen because just about nothing had gone wrong. Well, they slipped up a little bit in qualifying, qualifying 15th, but still expected that in race trim they'd be able to come to the front. That hasn't been the case thus far. As Andy noted, car is a little bit loose. Side by side still with the 62 of Brendan gone. One thing these teams have to learn is where are these where are these cars are going to go balance wise. Are they going to get tighter as the run goes on or are they going to get looser? And uh, that's one of the things they don't know till they run some laps. Yeah, and one thing Harvick has, you know, we talked about the the option of putting the, the two end pieces on the spoiler. Harvick was going to go for the, the full downforce and he uh, thought that that was going to help him if it was sunny. And this, we've got a very cloudy day. That may be hurting in somewhat. And let's mention quickly Michael Annette in that mix, along with Taylor Mousham as those two cars try and track down the 62. Let's move a little bit further forward. There you got a glimpse of Joey Logano for a moment. Let's check in on Kyle Busch. He's got Ricky Stenhouse. Oh, I love the front look on that Mustang. Isn't that something? I love these new cars, and that's been the feedback we've heard from a lot of the fans out there as well. And Stenhouse looking like he's got the low line. Can he clear him coming out? Yeah, I don't know if it's that splitter hitting that's keeping Kyle, but uh, after he made that charge up there, but picking up those five spots before they won that first lap, before they got to turn three, he's kind of fallen back, lost a couple of spots. <laughs> well, there you heard him saying that it's still dragging on that splitter and the front end is not turning, so Kyle's not having much luck with the corners. And then he says it doesn't feel like it's pull, uh, pulling down the straightaway. So if it's not turning well in the corner and you don't have the speed down the straightaway, that's not a very good combination. But Kyle Busch still hanging in there in the top ten, currently running seven. I guess everything else is all right except for that, though, right? <laughs> uh, we mentioned uh, Ryan Newman back out on track. Well, he's about to go two laps down as there goes the 22 right on by. And Brad Keselowski's lead now 2.1 seconds over 18-year-old Ryan Truex. And <laughs> Newman's saying, wait a minute, i got to get that lap back if I can. Yeah, I was looking at the lap times, you know, and obviously Keselowski's laying down some really fast ones, but so was Ryan Newman. I, after he made that pit stop, it looked like his car had kind of come back to life. 
Uh, let's try some more three wide action for a moment there. That's uh, Nemechek in the 87, the 66 of Stephen Wallace. He's in 20th position. And then right behind Stephen is Mike Bliss. Looking a little bit further back in the field, Danica Patrick, after getting up to 29th, has dropped back to 31st. She talked about staying on the lead lap in the pre-race show, and right now she's 34 seconds behind the race leader. There is the race leader, so she's going to have to pick it up a little bit, or it could be lap down city here pretty soon for Danica. There's your top five here at the Carfax 250 after 18 of 125 green flag laps. Still under green here in Michigan. Reminder that Lucas Oil NHRA Nationals qualifying tonight 11 Eastern ESPN 2 from Brainerd, Minnesota. The final Sunday 10 Eastern also ESPN 2. Tomorrow, the NASCAR Spring Cup Series Carfax 400 from here in Michigan. Casey Kane is on the pole. Coverage at 1 Eastern ESPN. We start with NASCAR Countdown at noon Eastern on ESPN. Then next weekend, the Nationwide Series moves on to Thunder Valley. Friday, 7 Eastern ESPN for action from Bristol Motor Speedway. That's what's upcoming uh, on the ESPN family of networks. Brad Kozlowski, the only leader of the race so far, started on the pole, has led all 22, now 23 laps complete in this race <laughs> of 125. Uh, he has uh, lapped up to the 32nd place car. That is Danica Patrick, who has become the first car one lap down. Uh, Mike, Danica, and all the other drivers learning a lot of lessons about this new car in this long yeah, run. It's kind of learn as you go, Alan. As you pointed out, this is the first time she's ever been in this car, of course, this weekend. Of course, everybody else, they've only been in this car twice, so they don't have that much of an advantage. You know, Alan, I spoke with her crew chief, Tony Yuri before the race, and I got to tell you, they weren't all that optimistic. He described the car on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the best. He said it was about a 4. He anticipated this car would react a lot more like what the cup car has been like, and that just hasn't been the case. It took them by surprise, and Danica's been complaining that the car's been extremely loose so far. Uh, those active hands on the steering wheel, never a good sign. Michael, thank you much. Kyle Bush about to come up and we'll put uh, Danica uh, a lap down to him as he goes off into the corner. Now, a long green flag run here at the beginning of the race, and we talked about just before the start of the race how 15, 20 laps in, uh, I think it was Brad Koslowski, our in-race reporter, was talking about how they were going to really find out what was going on with the cars after we got 15, 20 laps in. Well, they're 24 laps in. What are they finding out? Well, they're finding out a lot right now. It looks like Keselowski's cars balance real well. He's happy with it. But you go back to a guy like Kevin Harvick, who we all expected to be really fast. He's struggling. Looks like a real loose car to me. And a lot of guys are really looking for this first caution flag, in my opinion, to get down pit road and make some adjustments because this is the first time, Brad, they've had real racing conditions with this car at this track. Yeah, it looks like, Rusty, after about 20 laps, all the goodies worn off of those tires. And these cars are all becoming a real handful. I know the guys really want to get down pit road and get some Goodyear Eagles on these race cars so they can get, get them tightened back up a little bit. Watch the splitter as we look back at Brendan Gaughan's car. Wow, here. that thing is grinding the ground. Look at that. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah, you can tell the car is just way too far down on the on the uh, left front or else the left rear needs to be lifted up to push that right front corner down. If he's got a loose condition, he'll probably adjust that left rear corner, but that is not right. So what they're finding out, uh, Marty, DJ, and Andy, is they'd like to see a caution flag to make a pit stop. Well, that, you're absolutely <laughs> right, Alan, because this is the first time in the last 10 races here that the first caution has not come out in the first 20 laps, and we're uh, completing lap number 27 here shortly. So, yeah, I think these guys, uh, this, this totally threw the game plan out a little bit, but we have had this race go caution-free twice in the history. There's probably a lot of cars hoping and drivers hoping it's not going to go costing free because they want to adjust on them a little bit. Whoops, Whoa! Like left rear went, just went down on Jerry McClement's car there. And he saves it from going into the wall and pulls it down below the line and is going to be heading for pit road. So a good save for Jeremy Clements. While he pulls in, let's also update you. Uh, Morgan Shepard is now off track. And the others that are out, Brian Keselowski, Derek Cope, Josh Wise, Danny Eflin, Kevin LePage, and Willie Allen. And Jeremy was 29th when he had that tire issue. Trevor Bain, we talked about the two uh, of the three youngest guns in the top eight that had qualified. Trevor goes around Colin Brown, and that is seventh and eighth position. Let's go back and this was right in front of Brad Keselowski, our race leader, and nice job. 
They got a good view of that. They sure did, and that's not an easy thing to do. You have a tire go down, entering the corner and through the center there. You're generally going to hit something or spin out. Jeremy did a fantastic job. And we can tell you they gave him uh, new Dr. Fuel goods, and he is back out on track. Let's get an update from our race leader, Dave Burns. And when a tire goes down like Clemens did, it throws up little pieces of debris. And right before this race, Ruti Paul Wolf was on the front end of this car making what is a legal adjustment. He moves some tape from the upper opening of that car down. He told me about an eighth of an inch. He said, I'm a little worried that there's going to be some de debris collecting on this today. We really don't know. I want to give it as much room as possible for error. The good news is that the leader of the race has recorded his car handles great. Let's go to Tim Brewer in the tech garage. And Tim, the front ends of these cars can be really sensitive, and they it, it relates to both handling and temperature on those motors. Hey, you're exactly right. Folks, as those tires wear out, these particles of rubber, they stuff themselves right across the face of this. It gives you more downforce, but it also increases the water temperature because you want the airflow to go into the radiator and cool just as much at the bottom of the radiator as it does the top. So you might have to come in on a pit stop after learning more about these cars and remove more tape up in this area, keeping all that trash. It's fine down here, but you still have to have the nose open to get adequate airflow to the engine for cooling. Guys, while you were talking, we were watching this battle on the right side of the screen. That's Reed Sorensen moving out in front. Now we've got another one with Trevor Bain and Kyle Busch going side by side. That is for sixth on the racetrack. Yeah, Trevor Bain's one that looks like his car. Andy was talking about what's he going to do after a while, going to go to the tight or loose side. Whichever side it, he started out, his car is doing very well after they got on about 30 laps on the tire. Yeah, it's definitely coming to him uh, for Trevor Bain, but it's going away from Kyle Busch. You see just kind of steadily fading back, and it's got to be that splitter rubbing the racetrack that's causing the most problems. It's going to be hard to fix that on a pit stop, too. You know, something that everybody was talking about, and you brought it up, Andy, the great equalizer. We see these Gibbs cars where normally we're talking about them being out front battling each other for the lead, they're back into uh, struggling right now with the handling. You can see Danica on Pierre Road. Mike? Awfully loose, guys. They're going to make some significant chassis adjustments. Track bar and wedge. Four tires in Sunoco race fuel, but they're really trying to tighten that car up. An awful handful for Dan Danica Patrick as she's been struggling in the early stages of this one. They're away. And that'll end up putting her two laps down as the green laps continue to fly by. You see Joey Logano now up on the high side. And you mentioned the, the, the Gibbs cars. Logano's running in ninth right now. Ahead of Colin Brown, Kyle Busch is in seventh. And there is your top five here at the Carfax 250 after 31 consecutive green flag laps. And for Brad Keselowski, can he pick up win number four of the year right here at his home track? Yes, Green flag pit stops taking place. Second place, Ryan Truex. Doc. Moving overheating for Ryan Truex. They had to get some tape off the front. They also had a lot of rubber build up. You heard uh, Tim Brewer talking about how the rubber built up. They were showing some temperature in both the oil and water. Air pressure change. He was sliding a nose. What a great effort for the 18-year-old and only his second ever start in this series. But we have completed 36 of the 125 scheduled laps, all under green flag conditions. Leading all those laps is that man right there, last year's race winner, Brad Keselowski. Jason Leffler has now inherited and actually took second place. And now we can tell you that Trevor Bain is on pit road as well. Here he comes, Dave. Hardy, he worked his way up to the sixth position from that eighth place starting spot. At the beginning of the run, he said that his car was tight, wanted to push toward that outside wall. At the end of the run, he said we couldn't be much more balanced than it is right now. So Richie Jerry Baxter are going to give him just a slight air pressure adjustment, trying to make it better at the start of the run. Mike? And Brian Scott had been complaining early in this run that the car was a little bit aero tight. They're going to try to free him up with air pressure. No significant chassis adjustment on the 11 car as they swing around to the 11 and finish their pit stop, Dave. Leader Brad Keselowski on pit road. All during this run, a little free in and off the count, in and off of the corner, tight in the center of the corner. So they will make a four tire change and they will uh, make a slight air pressure adjustment for Keselowski. You saw the 18 of Kyle Busch also getting four fresh tires. He's pitted at pit in. Here's pit out. Keselowski easily gets back out in front. And there you see the damage on the right side of the 12 after uh, Allgaier has brushed the wall. Dave? Justin's car during this run very tight at the beginning and then loose to the middle and tight off of the 
corner. They're going to make a chassis adjustment on that car. It was a track bar. This, there's the 38 of Jason Leffler. He's been running in the top three throughout the course of these early stages of the race. Says the car's pretty good. A little bit snug on entry and a little free on exit, but otherwise fine. Four tires and a slight air pressure adjustment. Dave? Vince, Joey Legato had been running ninth. And to your discussion earlier, guys, about which way the cars would go, first it was tight, 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 tight. And then he said, surprisingly, it's gone freer. Now at the end of the run, it went back to tight again. So they'll adjust on this car. He's been trying to save that right front so that he didn't have any issues with it. I can tell you the 70th Shelby Howard is also in. Here comes Paul Menard, who had inherited the race lead. He's our third different leader. Leffler led for one lap. Carl Edwards coming down pit road right behind him. Remember, speed, 55 miles an hour. Mike? And the car has changed for Carl Edwards. At the beginning of the run, he was saying he was free on entry, but toward the end of the run, he said the entry was okay. What the problem is now with the 60 car, a little bit tight on throttle. They're going to make a four-tire change on that car. Also a chassis adjustment, trying to get that car a little bit more to Carl's liking and trying to get him so that he can get back on the throttle as quickly as possible to remove that tight condition. Okay. Ricky Stenhouse started this race six. He fell back to the 11th position as we have a gas can stuck, I believe, in the 33. Stenhouse is in now. Look at a four-tire change for a car that was a little free in and tight from the center off. It'll be a track bar adjustment for Stenhouse. Now we'll wait to see what happens as far as a penalty because the can actually did fall off of the car and got outside the box. So we'll wait for NASCAR's interpretation. Here comes Colin Brown, Mike. And Colin Brown pretty happy with his race car saying it was pretty secure for the most part needs to be freed up center off however they're going to make a wedge adjustment on that race car four tires and fuel for colin brown and the 16 team they've been having a pretty solid run so far but just not where they want it they need to make that just a little bit better they're away there's mike wallace as he comes in let's go over the wall going down on air both right side Well, we apologize for uh, Rick's language, obviously uh, frustrated because he had uh, two mistakes on the tires there. Meanwhile, the action on the 88, Doc. Elliot Sadler, one round down the track bar. Elliot's going to get not get the car to turn, coming off the corner to get it down off the wall. Made an adjustment here, four tires, and topped it off with Sunoco fuel. Well, quite a number of stops that we saw with mistakes. I mean, Carl Edwards, they had a 19-second pit stop. Per fast through penalty for the 33 because of the fuel can that got outside the box. And so that's going to hurt Kevin Harvick. And the guy who has inherited the race lead again after the cycling is Brad Keselowski. Let's go back, show you what happened on the 33. Well, this pit crew feeling some pressure under this green flag stop to get going. And they still have that gas can. You can see the gas man hangs onto it as long as he can, but it just got caught. And uh, that always draws a penalty. Yeah, I hope he's okay there. Hard, hard, outside, light. No report. There he was as he picked it up, so uh, he apparently is okay. Well, one thing I see right there, that can looks awful heavy, and they made a full green flag run. You would expect those cans to be almost empty. I'm just wondering if they didn't have some kind of problem getting fuel in the car. Danica Patrick goes three laps down now as Brad Keselowski came in with a 4.6 second lead. He now has a 5.9 second lead over Ryan Truex here at the Carfax 250. Hey, Verizon Wireless customers, text CHAMPION to 43776 for exclusive champion chats. It's content from our NASCAR Now roundtable of experts. And back here, we have been lean, mean, and green, completing 47 of the 125 laps so far. We've had five different leaders, but that man has led 43 of those laps. But right behind him, Jason Leffler and Ryan Truex are having a heck of a battle for second place. Truex came out after the pit stops with the second position. They're about 8.7 seconds behind. There they are. But now Leffler has just gotten around. And here comes Paul Menard into the mix. Andy? Well, you can see right here the pit crew for Ryan Truex doing an excellent job. 14.4, uh, doing a really good job to keep him in contention. And uh, he's still racing some really good cars here on the racetrack. 
And, yeah, and I was going to be interested to see this young man, his first time at Michigan, how he was going to be as far as getting on and off of pit road. And uh, he really did a, an okay job. He lost a little bit of time, but his pit crew picked him up, and that's what it's all about. Teamwork. He ended up not losing much time at all on that first time well, uh, with a green flag stop. And we should point out Pat Trison and the guys, uh, Martin Truex, his older brother, they're all down there helping. And so uh, let's listen to the uh, Double Zero radio. Why do I always call these? Got to keep the RPMs up. Probably my fault for not telling you, but you got to keep the RPMs a lot higher when you try and leave out of here. There's a lot of bikes in this racetrack. Yeah, that probably, a lot of that driver time that we saw was probably a lot of that with him either stalling or almost stalling the car. And with these tapered spacers, you really have to keep the RPMs up because you run such a high rear end gear. So uh, just another learning experience there. Best battle on the racetrack, there it is, second, third, and although Ryan Truex started to lose a little bit of ground to the two guys in front of him. Well, Paul Menard's on the move. You can see him right here making the move on Leffler. He's been running lap times as fast or faster than the 22 car, Brad Keselowski, so looks like we may have a challenger now for Brad Keselowski some, out of this uh, second group of cars. Looks like it's Paul Menard. Yeah, we saw Paul Menard and Carl Edwards, who had been battling on the racetrack, come into pit road basically the same time, uh, maybe a car length apart, and he's now seven, sec seven seconds ahead of Carl Edwards, who had a pretty slow pit stop. They had some trouble on the right front, but, but but Paul Menard is really getting the job done on the track. Now, during that conversation, we heard Ryan Truex talking about almost stalling the car and the team telling him about the RPMs. Just listen now as he comes off pit road. The pit crew making a great stop right here and comes down. He's ready to go here. You see, they're stalling. Right back up, but man, it cost you a little bit of time, Doc. And remember, he's just 18 years old. He's never been to this racetrack. Only his second ever start in the series. And he, is, he is on, has a very, very steep learning curve. We mentioned that Mike Grecci is talking to him. We've got Pat Tryson, who is the cup crew chief for Martin Truex, talking to him. And maybe most importantly of all, we've got his big brother and his hero, Martin Truex Jr., sitting on top of the pit box, being not only a driver coach, but a brother to help keep the young man calm and help him learn. Well, one other thing, he's the 2009 NASCAR K&M Pro Series East champion. He currently leads the Pro Series East standings again this year. Yeah, and I'll be on the driver's side here and a little in defense of, of Ryan Truex. They probably also talked to him about these are concrete pit boxes, and you can get a lot of bite. And that you get those RPMs up too much, you can break an axle or a drive plate back there. So I'm sure he was just being cautious that first time. Still doing a great job on the racetrack. And he's coming back on the 38, battling for position with Jason Leffler. He wants that third position back. There's second place, Paul Menard. They are 10 seconds behind race leader Brad Keselowski. He has checked out, at least for the moment. Because if Brad had to do anything, making adjustments to his car, he came back out and just making some fantastic laps. Vince, what's the latest? Well, the 38 of Jason Leffler had been running about third throughout the uh, early stages of this race, starting to slip back a little bit, and Jason just radioed in and said, I might have a right rear going down. It's starting to move around a lot in the back end. He said, maybe a slow leak, so they're keeping an eye on it, trying to determine whether he should come into the pits. Dave? And Vince, uh, guys were wondering about the leader. They did uh, make just a very slight air pressure adjustment. Brad saying that at the start of the run, it was a little bit tighter, but the balance is okay. DJ, I think that little bit tighter at the start of a run means you can really go out and drive it right yeah, yeah you got that right and he's doing a great job of that as he usually does and we heard a lot of these cars and drivers talking about how their you know their car was going to the loose side from tight and that's kind of different than the than the old car the old car used to get get tighter uh, this one not so much from the ones i heard it looked to me like the, the cars were getting loose we've knocked 53 laps down kevin harvick is the last car on the lead lap he is 20th right now 39 seconds behind Here's our five-hour energy rapid recap of the first half of today's race. Biggest mover, the five-hour energy car. Steve Wallace started at the back because of an engine change. He's up into the top 20. Yeah, he's looking good right now. Just trying to get himself from the back to the front, just like you said. That's going to have to keep pedaling that, baby, because that 22 car you see in the right-hand side, he has been flat flying. Uh, Danica Patrick. 
started this race, uh, got left in the first run of the race, then on the first pit stop, had a speeding penalty, and because of that now finds herself uh, pretty well back in the field. Uh, Patrick running in 33rd spot, three laps down to the race leader now. Kevin Harvick, one of the pre-race favorites. Kevin had a, a tough time on pit road as well. You see the gas can and the gas man both got stuck in the race car there, had to come back down pit road for a uh, penalty put him back in uh, deep in the field new car blues perhaps yeah, yeah oh absolutely and kevin back in 18th position after the pass through penalty while all that's been going on what's been going on has been that guy in that white 22 challenger brad keselowski has an 11.4 second lead on wow. second place paul menard he's just out there kind of toting around right now uh, that hot rod is flying they uh, evidently hit on something he and chad walter and uh, they have got it figured out a lot better than everyone else does right now. They are gone. And I correct my error. Danica's penalty was the blend line penalty, not the speeding penalty. Either way, it was the pass through. Yeah. And uh, didn't help anything, that's for sure. All right, let's uh, take you up to speed now. We've got 18 cars on the lead lap. You've seen the first five run through the frame. How about sixth place on back, Michael? And, of course, that's Carl Edwards in that sixth position. If you're wondering how much of an advantage it is having an alliance with a Sprint Cup Series team, well, consider this. The chassis of that 60 car is a former Cup car from the Roush Stables that they ran back in 2008. In fact, they've come here with a set of notes that were used by the 17 team. They've been working off of those, trying to set up that race car, and also picking the brain of Carl Edwards, crew chief on the cup side, Bob Osborne, trying to get the car dialed in. Mike, as we look back at the 20 car of Joey Logano, we mentioned at the beginning of the day, this weekend has been a struggle for them. Listen to what he had to report on the radio. Got it, back The good news, guys, is that it's the best it's been all weekend long, the best so far. But I bet they'll make some more adjustments on this caution flag period. Our first caution of the day, we had a car smoking on the uh, racetrack, and uh, they're worried about oil being down there. And it it's like word Chase is, Austin. Yeah, Chase is the uh, unfortunate victim in this case, as he is uh, coasting on down the backstretch. And there you can see some of the uh, smoke. I think the engine has been shut off, shall we say? Yeah, it might be smoking, but that front end of that thing still around, looks cool. Push, They've done such a great job with these nationwide cars. Well, the Aaron's lucky dog will go to the 66 of Stephen Wallace. He is in 19th position. It'll give us, as we say, 19 on the lead lap. Let's also report that we now have Ryan Newman behind the wall, and then Shepard Keslowski, Brian Keslowski, Cope, Wise, Eflin, LePage, Allen out of this race. So that big 11-second lead that Brad Keslowski had built up has vanished in our first caution here. And uh, we were talking about how long the green flag was. This is the longest green flag stretch to start a race since 2000 when we went 73 laps. See everybody getting loaded up for the second round of pit stops. I bet a lot of them have those uh, wedge wrenches out ready to start spinning some jack screws on these cars and making some changes. Yeah, it'd be their first real chance. To, to do that, even though they made that green flag stop, you don't want to take up too much time on that. So they'll be making a pretty good size swing at it here now. Last pits uh, ranged from lap 35 for somebody like Ryan Truex all the way through lap 39 for Paul Menard. But one thing that happens on a caution, you can actually interrogate the driver more detail and find out really more what the car's doing. That helps the crew chief make that decision on what kind of changes to make. When they're after under green, it's really hard to do that because they'll lose time while they're trying to, uh, you know, talk to the driver. Pit road is closed by NASCAR. The 43 has, there you see on the right side of your screen, it's, it's basically just coasted to a stop there. And so now they're going to have to get him out of the way before they can open. Yeah, that would create a big mess if they open pit road. Everybody's coming, so uh, don't want to have a log jam right there at the entrance. Yeah, i tell you what, somebody's been impressive today, a number of these young guys, but we watched Trevor Bain drive his way up into that third spot. He really is doing a, a great job with this car here. Really looked like running some of the faster times. Uh, maybe not quite as fast on the get-go as what Brad Keselowski, but in that case, nobody else was either. But made a made a nice run here to the front. It, we just see more and more as this uh, young man gets more experience, see him become more competitive. Yeah, now Paul Menard's able to erase that deficit he had. He had a pretty fast car, so he might be able to challenge uh, Keselowski for this lead. 
Well, make sure to go to Goodyear.com to check out Goodyear's Support Our Troops program. There you can send a thank you message from a NASCAR driver. You can enter for a chance to win a 2011 Ford Taurus or other great prizes. We uh, mentioned right before the last commercial break how uh, Kevin Harvick was at that time the last car on the lead lap. He was in 18th position, a full like 20, 43 seconds behind. And this is a huge opportunity for these guys to get back into the race as well. Well, what happened was Kevin didn't have the car that he thought he was going to have in the beginning of the race, but he did find something at the end of that long green flag run. He had moved up the track and made up a lot of time. Looked like he was ready to kind of maybe challenge some of these guys for the top spots, but then they made that mistake on pit road. Yeah, big break for that, and Andy, and you pointed out, I don't think he was full of fuel, so they were probably going to have to come in early too. Yeah, his pass-through penalty was on lap number 43, and we are working on lap 64. So as they come down pit road, let's uh, send it out to Vince Welch early. Well, waiting on the 38 of Jason Leffler, who's had a good run today. He's been running in the top five. He comes into his pit box running fourth, but he didn't like that last set of tires. He said he felt like maybe even had a tire going down, developed a vibration. They're going to pump up the air pressure in the left rear. Four new good years and Sunoco fuel for the 38. Doc? Ryan Truex up one round on the track bar. They're taking to be very, very deliberate. Now, when the jack goes out on the right side, put the car back in gear in first gear and red the throttle. Mike? Last round of pit stops, the 98 team took a half a pound out of the left front tire, and it helped the cars so much. They're making no serious changes here, just four tires and fuel, Dave. The leader's car is balanced very good. The clutch is very bad. Up, he didn't up. trust it, and it fails him. Clutch problems for the leader, Brad Keselowski, and he gives it up on pit road. As we check out the Nationwide Insurance Race off pit road, you can see how it has cost everybody and helped others. Logano picks up three. Leffler dropped two. And you saw Ryan Truex's crew uh, with a really great stop. They uh, basically held station from where they came in. Oh, we see the race off. Looked like Keselowski uh, to the line was second. But uh, we'll see where they line him up. He lost a lot of momentum off pit road. Well, we'll wait for NASCAR to uh, make the call. There you can see him sort of pulling back up behind Paul Menard. So the bit of a hiccup looks like it's only going to cost him the one spot but it's going to set up and let's take a look as we uh, show you again exactly how this unfolds there's Menard in the yellow in the further back area and then the very first car is Keselowski you see Menard just finishing up pulls out of his pit stall looks like he's going to be uh, free and clear coming down and even uh, the 99 car gets out with a good stop but Keselowski just doesn't get going looks like he lost a little more than a spot or two though well, it'll be interesting to see because you're right from that angle, although that's not the dead straight on angle. It looked like he could have been a, about fourth or fifth coming off that line. But again, it's where the timing line is, not necessarily where, you know, some of the painted lines that we see out there. There's about three of them out there. Vince, uh, what's the latest on 18? Well, Kyle Busch, as we've been documenting throughout the documenting throughout the course of uh, this race, has been having trouble with that splitter on the front end. They came in to raise the front end earlier. Now they're looking at possibly changing the splitter. So they changed the front, uh, the right side tires. They're also going to change the lefts on this one. But it's been a tough go so far here at Michigan for Kyle Busch. All right, back here at Michigan under our first and only caution. It's Paul Menard, Brad Keselowski, Trevor Bain, Joey Logano, and Ryan Truex, your top five. Let's show you the race off. Remember we told you the angle can be deceiving? There goes Menard, and there's Brad. The call was right. He is second. All he really lost was lane choice. Four wave arounds. Carl Long, Eric McClure, Mike Wallace, and Michael McDowell. And that means now we have a total of 20 cars still on the lead lap. As they come down, Brad Keselowski selects the inside lane. He's got a clutch issue. I'm sorry, Menard had the, the choice, and he goes to the high side. Let me correct myself there. I'm so used to having Brad out front all day <laughs> long. He's led 60 laps. And we're back to green flag racing here at Michigan. You see how this works out for Menard. I know why he chose that to try to get this run off of turn two, but Brad Keselowski got a great run down into the, the corner. Joey Logano going to try the high side, going three wide. There's the 99 sliding up. Trevor Baines got Leffler on the outside. Here goes Menard. He gets a little help from behind, and we're freight training down the backstretch. Right here's where that draft comes into play. And you see Logano now taking kind of a slingshot move into three. Can he hold the car down? He can hold it, but Menard's going to have the momentum off the corner, Carl. just like he did off turn two. Carl Edwards into the mix as well. Keselowski inside, now pulling in behind Carl. Well, got to be careful bump drafting through this part of the racetrack. Yeah. 
And that caution was also a huge break for Carl Edwards, who had gotten way behind also, but has a very fast car. Carvick is trying to move his way up. Keep an eye on the 33. Oh, three wide. Here Look we go. Menard doesn't know what he's missing behind him. Logano thinks better of it, falls in. Now there is Harvick. You can see where he is in this mix. As right now he is shown in the 10th position. Remember, he was in like 18th. Menard's got his mirrors full now of Carl Edwards. Edwards takes a peek to the inside. Here comes Keslowski. Now this is where draft, really, this has always been a case at Michigan, but even more so with these new cars. On Carl Edwards Brad. able to push him, push Menard on by there and take that second spot away, too. Joey Logano side by side with the 99 of Trevor Bain. A little bit further back is Jason Leffler. Coming into the mix also, Reed Sorensen there in the yellow 32. And there is Kevin Harvick up to the eighth. And of course, as we look at the 22 and the 60 side by side, we would be remiss if we didn't remind everybody. <laughs> they have a bit of history and are both on probation right now and giving each other plenty of room. I like the teamwork you're seeing right here with the two uh, Roush cars with Menard and Edwards working together and, and using this draft to stay ahead of Keselowski. Brad slides back into the third spot. And from high above, there's Trevor Bain taking a peek underneath. Can he make it? and clear him doesn't look like it side by side with Joey down the back stretch you can see Keselowski trying this one more time down to the inside where he had both of them together there he may be able to slide up in front of Carl Edwards that's what he's going to try to do but I don't Not think he got happen. enough of a run that time it's like I said earlier Paul Menard running lap times as fast as Keselowski even though he was seven or, or ten seconds behind and now he's able to get out front and really use that fast car. Well, and this is the first time Paul's ever led here in the Nationwide Series at Michigan in his fifth start here at the two-mile oval. 67 starts since his one and only win back in Milwaukee, June of 2006. Maybe today's the day. Uh-oh, whoa, problems for Jason Leffler down the backstretch. He is slowing. We heard just the tail end of the radio. Could you catch it? I didn't. Mi I missed it. No, but it has to look like some type of engine problems. Carl's taking a look to the outside, trying to make that work. Vance. That guy saying that uh, Leffler came on the radio and he said, "Man, this has been a good car, but we just blew up. No oil pressure at all for the Jason uh, for the 38, the Great Clips Toyota. Jason Leffler bringing it in. Disappointing. They were running in the top five throughout the course of the early race. This will be his seventh DNF of the season. It has not been the kind of year that that team has wanted. Meanwhile, out on the backstretch, look at the top three. This is a great battle going on. It's almost like Keselowski's not going to be able to make this pass without some help." I'm, uh, right as I say that, it looks like he's going to well, make, make it here. After an 11-second lead, I don't think anybody's going to want to help him. No, they're not going to, especially these two uh, forwards. They're not going to want to help him with that dodge. Yeah, and he's gonna, As you said, he's going to have a difficult time there. He's, he, what he's going to have to do is get himself in position where Carl's away from the 98 just a little bit, and he can slide up in between. Then he might be able to make that happen. But trying to, to make a run to where he can get by both of them is going to be very difficult. Well, and of course, don't forget, Paul Menard is going to go to Richard Childress Racing next year, so he'll be over into a Chevrolet camp running in Sprint Cup. Looking a little bit further back, the fastest car on the track right now, Justin Allgaier. Yeah, we were just talking about Keselowski needs some help. He's going to have a, all the help he wants here in a minute with this group <laughs> of cars catching him. Yeah, you see right up in front of him is a guy that I'm looking at, though. That's Kevin Harvick. He's got this groove up on the top of the racetrack. He is coming right now, guys. Harvick is up to sixth position. He was running 21st after the pass-through penalty. And look at this battle up front, running nose to tail, a pair of Fords and a Dodge Challenger. And it's real easy to tell them apart. See, now Keselowski's still trying to make that move on the bottom. Back on board with Brad. Oh, no, what more I can do there, Paul? Sorry about that. 10-4, man. It's not your fault. I don't know. Just aren't getting this problem fix that we've talked about now for a few weeks. It's frustrating. Hey, we got a good car here. We're going to still win this thing. I don't let that set us back. Four, copy. With Paul Wolf now as they go by the front straightaway. Paul, is the clutch, how bad is it? And it will it only affect him on your final pit stop? Well, 
They're just able to stay. You know, we can't get clear of them because they can draft back up. So um, we'll keep working on it, and uh, we'll see what we got at the end. Help the non-mechanic in me. Is it only a problem on the final pit stop or something that can hurt it on the track, too? No, it's just going to be a pit stop. We're good on the track. So, uh, you know, we just got to do the best we can in the pits here and, uh, and uh, keep it up front. And it's obviously still very fast, Marty. Oh, and, and while you're talking to him, this has just been great watching. Look at the Menard all of a sudden slides back. And here you got Carl Edwards now taking over the race lead. We've now had seven lead changes between six guys, and we're down to 49 laps to go. And here comes Harvick. ESPN's coverage of Major League Baseball continues tomorrow night with a battle of NL East rivals from City Field. Raul Labanez and the Phillies take on David Ryan and the New York Mets on ESPN's Sunday Night Baseball at 8 Eastern. Game also available on ESPN3.com. We're having a real slugfest here at uh, Michigan International Speedway with 44 laps to go. The race for the lead, Carl Edwards in 60, Brad Keselowski in 22. The second race for NASCAR's next generation car after a somewhat spread out first run, a set of pit stops, and things have been hot and heavy up front, Rusty. They have been great up front. I mean, you see Carl Edwards and uh, Brad Keselowski just got the cars running good, but there are a lot of have and have nots out there, guys. We've only had one caution flag to speak of, and there's a lot of cars out there needing big time adjustments. You got to remember, this is a first time in competition for this new car at this particular track, and they are dying for some pit stops to make some more adjustments. And while Keslowski tries to find a way around Carl Edwards and back into the lead, remember he's been the dominant driver in this race so far, though had a clutch problem on a, on his only pit stop. Uh... On, on the last pit stop, I should say, one of two during the race. Kevin Harvick had a pit stop problem, and boy, is he on the charge, back up to third spot and closing on the leaders. I'll tell you what, Kevin Harvick is flat flying around this racetrack. You know, since the start, he's back up 12 positions. He's done a great job of battling getting himself back into position to give himself a chance. Now, a couple guys that have been factors to win about every race they've been in for the last few years. The Joe Gibbs Racing entries, Joey Logano and Kyle Busch. Right now, Logano is running in sixth, and Kyle Busch is running behind him in eighth. I mean, they're not out to lunch or anything. Let's not get ridiculous, but yeah, we're used to seeing these two guys whenever they show up and close that window net, leading a lot of laps and dominating. They're, uh, they're kind of back a little bit today, not exactly running up front, but they're working their way there. I think the last 20 laps, we'll Look see some stuff happen. this oh. four wide. <laughs> I think we said earlier, if we saw four wide, we were going to stand up. Watch your head when you do, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, one guy who won't be around to be part of uh, what we hope is a great finish to this event was running fifth at the time of his troubles. Jason Leffler's with Vince. That's right. He was very strong in the 38 today, running top five all day. But uh, ultimately, Jason, what uh, sent you to the side? Yeah, I don't know. Something in the motor. I think it might, might have broke a cam or something, but uh, it's a shame. Uh, Greg Clips old Navy car was really strong all day. And uh, I've had zero motor failures for three years, and I've had about four or five this year. So as many of these things are... You know that we break you think i'd know a broken side but i don't know something different every time it's getting pretty frustrating especially when you have a good car like that marty uh, while you're talking with uh, jason the battle up front has really gotten interesting again you saw that for a moment at least the 22 of brad keselowski there he goes again sticks his nose in front of the 60 of carl edwards and then a little bit further behind take a look at menard and bain that is for fourth on the track guys so pick your poison we got action everywhere Sure do. I tell you, Brad Kessler has been very impressive, but uh, Carl's giving him everything that he can handle right now. I really thought that uh, that Brad might just go up and kind of, you know, blow him away and, and move on, but that hasn't been the case. The way it started out, the race did. He took off. Brad Keselowski just took off and hid. And then after that little, just a little hiccup on pit road, he lost that lead, and it just it took him this long to get it back. I think what we're seeing too, th these guys getting used to these cars, what they can and can't do with them. They're learning all about it learning to use the draft even more at a place like this that maybe in the past with the older car they weren't, didn't have those opportunities. That was Kenny Wallace going another lap down. He is now uh, shown in 32nd position. It's Keselowski and Edwards up front with 40 to go. 
Welcome back to the Carfax 250, and make sure to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. And also, go to Goodyear.com to show your thanks and help support our troops, as Goodyear is the official tire of NASCAR. All right, let's uh, reset it for Brad Keselowski and Carl Edwards, uh, as uh, they are running 1-2, about a half a second apart. That's the view from high above. And let's uh, pick it up there with let's go in up to speed with Kevin Harvick and third place Mike Massaro. Well, the 33 team, Marty, certainly got their money's worth on that last pit stop. They took some time, made some adjustments. They actually adjusted the sway bar, trying to get that car right. They felt like it was worth the investment of time, and obviously they were right. It has paid off. Kevin Harvick has been making his way to the front so much, in fact, that the leaders, while monitoring their radio, they're all concerned about the 33. They want to know how fast he's coming, Dave. Mike Trevor Bain running fourth. Until last week, he had won three poles in a row, and some were asking, is he ready to win? Trevor thinks that he may be, but he said the biggest thing that that gave him was confidence, and not just his own confidence, confidence from his team members. He could sense that they felt he had made it here. And if you press him about whether he's ready to win, he says, you know, if I was running in the 15th to 10th position all the time, it wouldn't bother me so much, but when you're running in the top five, I'm starting to think about it too. As for the 12 of Justin Allgaier, on the last pit stop, they made a track bar and air pressure adjustment. It was loosened, it was tied off. He said they made the entry and the exit better. Well, there's something left the center and they need to work on that on their final stop mike well in the previous round of pit stops paul menard and matt Puchin were so happy with the adjustments they made that on the last round of pit stops they elected not to change anything just four tires straight up in fuel well it appears to have bit them a little bit the car has gotten a little bit looser awful handful for paul menard to hold on to right now vince well, the 18 of Kyle Busch has won nine times this season, and he has won here at this racetrack before as well, but he hasn't had a car to win today. They've dealt with the front end of the car throughout the course of this race, raised the splitter, made a shock adjustment, had the hood up at one point as well. They're going to make more adjustments on this final stop. That will come with about 15 laps to go. Dave? Vince's teammate, Joey Logano, doesn't have the speed he wants, and he says the handling right now is contributing to that. He says it's looser than it was, and I'm losing speed as I end the corners. Let's Sorensen is running ninth. Sorensen has been fighting a loose race car throughout the course of the day. You see Sorensen there on the right-hand side, the yellow car that just snuck behind. He's been fighting loose throughout most of the afternoon today. They're going to put a little wedge in it to make it a little more handable next time around, Doc. And there's the 15 car. Michael Odette began the day in 17th position. Ryan Kugel made a very good call on the first pit stop, made an adjustment with a track bar near pressure, and Michael went all the way up to 12th but couldn't go any further. Last pit stop, he went again on the track bar and air pressure and now on lap 77 Michael Annette has driven that car into the top 10 and he's trying to finish in the 10th the top 10 spot in points uh, when we leave today. Marty. All right, thanks, guys. We're watching Reed Sorensen because uh, he has been going backwards here. You think something's wrong? Yeah, it looks like he might have an engine problem or something. Uh, maybe down, down a cylinder? Well, his teammate is in the garage area, Jason Leffler, with an engine that, that has expired, so he may be having the same issue. Yeah, he's definitely got, a, got some kind of engine problem. Vince, what are you hearing? Well, they just came on, and they asked him if he had a tire going down. He said, no, I'm just wicked loose right now. So it doesn't seem to be an engine issue. At least he's not communicated that on the radio to this point, but he says he's got his hands full of that race car. Yeah, one, th one thing we might have seen here is he might have gotten real loose, and then it just killed the RPMs. When he came by here, it just did not have the RPM. Looked like he just had to get out of the throttle coming off of four. Yeah, that constitutes being pretty loose right there. Yeah, yes. so. Well, let's go back up front. Oh, Brad Keselowski is leading Carl Edwards. You can throw a blanket over both of them. Brad has clinched for most laps led. He's led 71 of them, and the driver leading the most laps has won eight of the last 12 here at Michigan. Oh, man, back here at the Carfax 250 of Michigan. Look at our race lead. The top three cars had lap traffic, and it has tightened the battle up. It's Keselowski in front of Carl Edwards. Kevin Harvick wants that high line. And we are winding down the laps, 26 to go, and something to look forward to, guys. The final green flag stretch has been 10 laps or less in six of the last seven races. This is going to get good. It is good. Look at this. These guys are racing hard. Harvick, had, he had been using that extreme high line till he caught this group, and then Carl Edwards basically took it away from him when he saw that. You can see how Carl now is not going to let Harvick get up on the outside of him. 
And we saw how the draft really pulled Kevin Harvick up. Once he got uh, kind of a sniff of those two cars, he closed in on them quickly, but now he can't get by them. Well, here's something else to think about Kevin Harvick. When he won here back in 2003, he took the lead for the first time with 10 laps to go. And here he comes down for his final pit stop. So Harvick is going to get four fresh tires as a, we're going to have another round of green flag stops. And he is the first of the leaders to come in. Well, he had that one mistake leaving the gas can in just a little too long and pulled it out of the pit stall. But he's coming down for this money stop, Mike. And the guys are on the wall waiting for Harvick to arrive. They know how important this pit stop is. Harvick into his box, hits his marks absolutely perfectly. The team goes to work on the right side of that car. Two tires there. They swing around to the left side. A four-tire change for Harvick. One can of Sunoco race fuel as they continue their work on the left side of this car. Harvick finally away. Clean stop, though. 14.8, there's the race leaders coming across the start-finish line right now. And Harvick is going to go a lap down, but remember, everybody has to cycle on through. There he comes back out onto the racetrack. He has to stay below that yellow line until he gets over to turn two. He just has to hope right now that there's not a caution flag here. Ryan Truex, who has uh, fallen back down, and now he has come back out. Now the 18 is in. Doc... just finishing up his stop. They went with a track bar adjustment. They've been chasing the handle on this car all day long. Four tires and fuel. Mike. Taylor Malsum uh, has been loose throughout the course of the day. They too have been chasing it. An air pressure adjustment this time around on the 10 car. As they go to work there, a four tire change is planned. Also two cans of Sunoco race fuel on the 10 car as they try to tighten him up with air pressure. Malsum down and away at 15.5 seconds. Meanwhile, Carl Edwards on pit road as well. The win may be in the balance here. The team going to work. The car has been a little bit tight in the center of the corner. They're going to try to correct that as well with air pressure. A four tire change on the 60 as they continue their pit stop. A quick one down and away for Edwards, Doc. Michael and Ned all the way up to seventh position. Now the best he has run today, trying to get his third top 10 finish of the year. Slide air pressure adjustment. Final pit stop down and away. Mike. Colin Brown with a pretty strong run going as well, trying to maintain that as they complete their stop at just over 14 seconds. Four tires and fuel for Brown. Guys, right now on pit road, all these things are happening as the 99 of Trevor Bain comes down pit road. During that run, he tried a high line through the center of three and four. He did not like it, so he went back. The car was a bit tighter, and it wasn't hooked up in the rear. So as they go to work on this, they'll try to loosen that car up and get that rear to grip just a little bit more for Bain. He was running uh, fourth in this round before everybody started pitting. Good run for him today. And Keselowski is on pit road as well. He said last pit time around on the track, he said, are these guys short pitting on me? Should we be coming down pit road? So Chief Paul Wolf made the call. Remember last time he was on pit road, he had a clutch issue in the 22 car. So when they come down pit road this time, he will try to pump that up as it comes as they raise that car on the jack and make sure he can get that transmission re-engaged now as far as the handling goes he's been pretty happy with the race car obviously he took the lead back after about 20 laps so they make no adjustments on this round for keselowski keselowski they're finishing up their stop right now it looks fairly clean for him and let's see if he can get the car off of pit road he does stall it again he'll need a push for his crew and now he's back on the racetrack 20 car of Joey Logano in. Loser, losing speed on the entry. We'll make an adjustment for Joey and send him back out as well. Justin Allgaier also coming down pit road. Of the three leaders when they came in, the best pit stop was turned in by Carl Edwards' crew. Here comes Allgaier for his final stop. Dave? On the last run, they fixed the car for Jace, uh, for Justin, entry and exit. He said both of them were better. They need to free up the center a little bit more, so that's going to be an air pressure adjustment. Adjustment already done on two of the four tires that are going on this race car. Full of Sunoco fuel, and Allgaier is gone. As he pulls out 13.9, the race lead will cycle through to Carl Edwards, and that's exactly what we were talking about, guys, and he uh, got the best of that deal. Well, his pit crew really came through right there. That, they had a, an excellent right side tire change, and, and it came all the way back around to the left, and really, um, that 13-second stop, 
You can see just how much distance that is on the track between Carl Edwards and Brad Keselowski. Almost five seconds on the track, and it was a lot closer than that when this last round of pit stops started. How important is the money stop? I think you just saw the results on your screen. Now the question is, can Brad Kay and Kevin Harvick reel them in? Back here at the Carfax 250 at Michigan with 15 laps to go. Carl Edwards' lead over Brad Keselowski is three seconds, but the developing story during the commercial break is the falling back of Kevin Harvick. Whoa, and before we get to that, the 23 of Robert Richardson scrapes the wall and no caution on the track. So only one caution. So far, and just as I say that, the caution does come out, and you can see the damage on the right side of the 23. Yeah, he hammered that wall pretty good. And he was running 28th at the time of the contact. We've got a total of 10 cars out of this race. And the big question mark is now Kevin Harvick. He was sliding back, guys. We'll check up on that. But first, let's show you exactly what happened. Whoa, a little contact there. But Michael Annette. And the 66 of Stephen Wallace. And then just a little bit further up. Oh, contact from the 66 into the 23. That'll do it. <laughs> you get hit like that makes it difficult to hold on to, but hard racing here at Michigan. All right, now let's get to the update on Kevin Harvick. Mike, what are you hearing down there? Well, the big thing we've been hearing throughout the course of the weekend when it comes to this new generation car, the splitter. It's challenged these teams. Well, it's given Harvick and the 33 team a significant problem. Let's listen in. No, no, maybe the splitter's laying on the ground. It looks exactly the same, Kevin. It don't look like it's hanging down. I don't know what happened here with this car, but it definitely was slower after they made that pit stop. All right, let's go back. That's a side window out of some car. And that's Harvick. Uh-oh. Ooh. That might be some of his problem there. We did not see that. Great camera work, guys. Put a hole right there. I'm trying to see if there's a hole in the nose, but I don't well, see. It looks like a piece of that window maybe right there. Yeah. There's definitely some damage there. If that is... But Harvick certainly was slower that run. I'm out of what the problem was. All right. Well, let's reset this for you because we're now down to 13 to go with Brad Keselowski second behind Carl Edwards. Trevor Bain has moved up to third. Bernard is fourth. Kevin Harvick is now dropped back to fifth. And I guess the question I got to ask you, uh, are you worried about that transmission? No, it shouldn't be a problem here. It's just whenever he has to get the car back in gear on the pit stop right here, he won't even need to use the clutch to shift the third and fourth gear. All right, so the clutch should be okay and uh, not being a factor. Let's get you the 09 because that's our Trevor Aaron's Banks lucky dog, John West Townley. And we are getting some takers on to pit road. Good call, Andy, as Trevor Bain has come down, and so has the 33 and the 18 as well. Vince. Well, they've still been working on this car. They're going to put another uh, round in the track bar and also air pressure back in the right front. They haven't gotten it to where they want it to go, but they get. They feel like they're getting a little bit better. Still plenty to do. They're seventh. Dave? Trevor Bain will take the tires. They're going to make uh, just a slight adjustment for him on that run. He wasn't really happy with it, even though it was a very short run. Mike? And the 33 is on pit road. They're going to work there. And it appears they're doing more work than just looking at the splitter. They've got the hood up. They're looking at the shocks as well. It appears it could be a, a bigger problem than what was first initially thought by Harvard. The they're looking underneath, trying to make sure there's no damage they can quickly fix, trying not to go a lap down. The hood pins are now relatched, trying to get Harvick back out here before it's too late. 17 cars on the lead lap right now. The last being Ryan Truex. Remember, he had been running up front, but he was having handling issues. That's what sort of was his demise. He kept falling back, but he is still on the lead lap. Harvick gets refired, and now we'll pull back out and we'll fall back in probably in that 17th, 16th position somewhere in there. And as we uh, scan through the field, we mentioned a lot of uh, teams, all 10 cars out of this race. Danica Patrick still running, but it has been another struggling day for her. She's 30th right now, four laps down. 
I think we've updated you on just about everybody. All the players, we've given you the top five. We're down to 11 laps to go next time by here at the Carfax 250. All right, back here at the Carfax 250, we have 10 laps remaining, and uh, we're going to talk about the pit stops that the guys that did come in, and Trevor Bain has now come back out in ninth position, and Kyle Busch is ahead of him now in seventh, and here's the reason why. Trevor Bain was the highest-running car that made a pit stop right there, and he, he lost a spot, or actually a couple spots, but one of them to Kyle Busch, who had a great stop. His, his team doing a... A good job on pit road, 13 and a half seconds. And uh, you can see most of it on the left side for Trevor Bain's team. All right, let's update Kevin Harvick's situation. He's now shown in 16th position. He hits this piece out on track. Mike? Well, you saw that piece of plexiglass uh, Kevin Harvick hit on the racetrack. Well, here's part of it. They just dug this out of the grill of the car. The good news is for the 33, they found no problems with the shocks or the splitter. Well, the biggest problem is he's, like we said, in 16th. Let's reset it for you because the top six cars did not stop. It's Edwards, Keselowski, Menard, Allgaier fourth, Logano, Colin Brown. Then the first to stop is Kyle Busch. And the green flag flies, and we are racing again with nine laps remaining here at Michigan. I want you to look at that Dodge engine pull. Carl Edwards got a great jump. He actually got out front by about three-quarters of a car length. And here comes Brad Keselowski going to clear him. That's incredible right there. That's just, when you see that, that's a lot of motor. Now you see three wide off the corner. Got some smoke off of uh, Brendan Gaunt's car. Yeah, he's got something going on. It could be a I big problem if he can get over. Oh, yeah, 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 he's got five. five. They're all good. So it looks like the engine let go, and that would be the second engine this week for that team. He was well, running 12. Yeah, I'd be surprised not to see a caution here. These cars will have to run through that where he blew that engine. Battles all over the track, and there is Kyle Busch. He was down on the apron on the restart. He's got Colin Brown giving him a little nudge, and here comes Stenhouse into the mix as well. I kind of worried about them driving through where Brendan Gaughan blew up because he said it exploded. If there's not oil down there, there's probably pieces of metal. Well, we're going to get our oh, yeah, first idea. The yep. Somebody brushed the wall there. Couldn't see exactly who. That was the six of Stenhouse. See, Trevor Bain had to get out of the throttle a little bit, lost a little bit of time. Keslowski has opened up a two-tenth of a second lead and is trying to do what he did at the very beginning of the race, and that is check out on the field. It is Edwards and Allgaier and then Menard. That's your top four. And now seven laps remaining. A little bit further back, there's Reed Sorensen side-by-side side with Colin Brown. Here comes the 88 of Sadler into the mix. Trevor Bain right behind Sadler. On board with Colin. Yeah, most of these guys either got, got some kind of tires on that last caution, so their cars handle a little bit better, trying to make as much as they can out of this. Kyle Busch is the one doing the most with his tires. You can see right here, making a move on Menard in, into three. I remember he was the first on the four fresh tires, and he now is ahead of Menard, put him into fourth position. When you talk about a dangerous driver, you put Kyle Busch on four tires with 10 to go, it can be dangerous. Let's check in on Kevin Harvick. He is in 14th position. He restarted 16th, going around Ryan Truex now for 13th. Yeah, they reported, Mike said that it was a good thing they didn't find anything. I think Kevin Harvick was hoping they would find something because there's still something wrong with this race car now. Battle for third is starting to heat up because Kyle Busch is coming oh so close to the 12 of Justin Allgaier. Next time by, there'll be five laps remaining, just 10 miles. He's got a big run here. This pass should be relatively easy, but look how low he gets on the racetrack. He's completely off on the apron. Yeah, I think it's going to be tougher than you think, maybe, because Allgaier looks like he's going to protect that outside, and that's going to make it more difficult for Kyle Busch to get a run on him off the corner. Well, Keselowski was dominant at the beginning of this race. It looks like he's trying to dominate the last few laps. You saw the gap between first and second there. Now Allgaier goes to the low side. Kyle goes with him, and Menard says, okay, see if I can make the high line work. Let's get more on the race leader, Dave Burns. When I talked to, when Paul Wolf talked to his driver about whether or not to pit on that last round of pit stops, Brad was thinking about coming and getting tires. Paul Wolf said, I want to stay out because once we get back out in clean air, you can win this race. Paul told me this morning that one of the reasons he's still motivated even though they've got a huge lead in the driver's championship they want to beat the 18 car in the owner's championship it's a separate group of points and right now kyle bush's 18 team leads that by 34 he said that's what motivates us we can still get him and he said by the way brad if we pit the 18 will for sure stay 
out because they're in that same race. One of the biggest reasons that that 22 car stayed out is because they didn't want to make another pit stop with that clutch problem they've had. They've really dodged a bullet all day long with that thing, and uh, the last thing they want to do is have to make another stop. Yeah, and that caution caught them up. They didn't have to worry about that clutch there, and they were three to four tenths faster every lap before that. They continued that pace now. Here comes Kyle taking a peek again underneath the 12. Can't get it done, though. He just can't keep the momentum going. He now slides Menard back up, and now Menard comes down underneath Kyle. Yeah, this might give uh, Algar an opportunity to get up there for that second spot with Carl Edwards. Menard had the position at the stripe, but here comes Kyle again on the high side. While these four guys duke it out for those positions, Brad Keselowski saying, thanks, fellas, I'm seeing you. It's three to go here, and uh, Algar trying to make it a Penske 1-2. Doesn't get it done as they come down the back stretch. Carl Edwards holds on to the spot. Remember, Roush Fenway has 20 total wins here at Michigan in all three touring series. Check in on Kevin Harvick as he is picked up now to 10th as he's gotten around Trevor Bain. Well, yeah. not yet. <laughs> Let's go back to the battle. Second, third, and fourth. There's the gap with now two laps remaining and Kyle saying time's running out. Let's go. And Allgaier was in a tough position there. He wanted to try to make a move on Carl Edwards, but Kyle Busch just drove by him going into turn one. And instead of going for second, he's fourth now coming off of two. Kyle has won nine of the 18 races he has raced in. This is race number 23 for the series. And the record he is co-holder with, Sam Ard, is 10 in a season. And that's the gap he's got to try and make up, and there's just not enough time left. It looks like he's going to get up to second here as he goes underneath Carl. White flag is out. Carl says, I'm not ready to give it to you. Two miles to go, and oh, man, now he pushes him up a little. Allgaier might could have an opening here if he sit back just a second. Well, there's the gap if he can split the uprights. Kyle slides back up, slams the door shut. No, Down the back stretch. Not quite. Looks like he left just enough room for Edwards. Carl's got the position. Allgaier can't do anything about it. And here comes Brad Keselowski through turns three and four. He makes it look easy on this last stretch as he comes down the front stretch. Black foundation, buddy. Nice, nice job, guys. Congrats. His fourth win of the season in the battle for second. Who's going to get it at the stripe? It's Edwards ahead of Kyle Busch, then Justin Allgaier, Paul Menard, and Joey Logano, your top six. Then Trevor Bain, Truex, Stenhouse, Malsom, and Scott, and on down through the field. Michael Annette comes home in 16th. John West Townley, the last car on the lead lap in 17th position. Mike, it's all yours. And catching up with the winning crew chief, Paul Wolf. Clutch problems throughout the day on pit road. Somehow, though, you were able to overcome. How? Well, I mean, it just shows uh, we're a championship caliber team. And, um, you know, when we have trouble, we're still able to pull through. And I'm just proud of everybody on this team. Um, this discount tire, bring out the new challenger to be this strong. Um, it's just a great day for everybody at Penske, and I appreciate all the hard work. How were you able to, to adapt so quickly to this new car just the second time out? Well, I mean, it's just working hard. I mean, that's what it is. is you got to work hard. You got to pay attention. Um, it's a different car, but it's asking for different things. But, um, you know, if you do your homework, you can figure it out. Congratulations. Thank you. Guys, 22 team back in victory lane. And it becomes a back-to-back -back winner here. And uh, the most wins at Michigan? Two. Ryan Newman has two. Mark Martin, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Todd Bodine. And now that man right there, Brad Keselowski. Very patriotic celebration going on here. Eight different drivers had won the last eight races here in the Nationwide Series at Michigan, but now a repeat clutch, winner. I think that clutch still giving him trouble. Yeah, this may not be a, the best burnout ever, but I don't think he's going to care that much. Now, you know, we heard in the countdown show about the Dodge executives talking about how much bringing this new car out had really helped them and their focus on this and going to victory lane doesn't hurt anything either. Great job today by Brad Keselowski. And Brad's still trying to get the car to fire and hopefully get enough of a clutch to get it into gear. We'll talk to him when we come back. Well, as you can see, Brad did finally get the car engaged, and here's what he said on the radio. There we go. I don't need no stinking clutch. <laughs> 
Well, let's take a look at the championship points lead. Uh, even though Carl Edwards does finish second, he loses a little bit more ground, and the gap now 347. No changes in the top 10, and uh, even Carl said it's going to be an awfully long shot for him. It's going to take major collapse by Brad, and there was certainly no collapse today as Keselowski goes back-to-back -back here at Michigan. He has made it to the winner's circle as uh, the celebration is about to begin. And look at the smile on his face. Remember, just about 90 miles away is where he grew up. Dave, let's send it down to you. And Marty, we started the day asking Brad if anything could top last year, and you told me one thing, did it? Yeah, um, this one was even harder, and uh, you know, I lost the clutch and uh, kind of killed the burnout there, but I was trying. <laughs> I couldn't get it to run, but couldn't get out of the pit stall and uh, kept losing spots on pit road because of that, but uh, just fought back from adversity with an awesome Dodge Challenger. These new cars are sweet to drive, and uh, they're even better to drive when you got one as fast as Dodge gave me with this Challenger. So proud of everybody on this discount tire team. And, uh, you know, we want to win races going for the championship. We don't just want to coast through it. And uh, we're racing as hard as we can for, uh, for all these people that are working their butts off at Penske Racing and for those fans that support us up here, especially here in Michigan. These are my guys and uh, love every one of them. So it's awesome to win in front of them. Now, about those wins, Brad, your crew chief wanted to talk you into staying out for the owner's championship idea. How bad did you want to stay out because that clutch was so gone? Well, I, you know, I wasn't sure what the right way it was to go. Uh, knowing that the 18's behind us, he can see what are we doing, do the opposite, and that's where take advantage of it, but uh, our car was just that good. It didn't matter. Brad, I know you grabbed the American flag because your foundation is uh, supporting a, a big group this weekend. Yeah, we've got uh, my first event for the foundation. I just started the Checkered Flag Foundation uh, tomorrow for uh, wounded warriors, you know, a bunch of soldiers that have been serving that uh, have been hurt or wounded. Uh, and uh, can't wait to support them and a little American flag action for them as well. What do you think they're going to think of what you did today? Uh, I, I hope they're supportive. Uh, they're a great group. I've met a few of them already and uh, can't wait to have some fun with them tomorrow. Brad Keselowski takes Dodge to victory lane for the fourth time in 2010. It was a close one. Carl Edwards chased him all the way to the line. And uh, what was the difference? <laughs> I mean, when you say, look at two hundredths of a second, there's not much of a difference. But uh, what, what made the difference today at the end? 200 seconds between me and Brad? What'd you say? No, 200 between me and Kyle. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we, um, we we had a really a really well-balanced Valvoline uh, Ford Mustang. I thought if that last caution didn't come out, uh, Brad was so much faster, and I thought, man, this is going to time just right, and uh, this is going to be a heck of a battle at the end. Uh, the caution came out, though, and Brad and those guys, uh, man, they just, just took off. So um, congrats to them. Uh, we raced side by side, very clean all day, and um, it, was just a, it was a fun race. I just wish our car was a little faster, but um, no, for for uh, for having a new car and for coming out here with the new Mustang and, and finishing second, being that strong, I felt like it was a pretty decent day. Yeah, there was a lot of questions, uh, a lot of unknowns coming into this race today. How would you evaluate how the car raced today? I thought the car raced really well, and um, I noticed some teams struggled, and, and some teams uh, did really well with it, and I think as, as we go on, we learn a little bit more it'll become very very competitive like the the cup series but um just uh, we just didn't have enough for him today i'm pretty excited about tomorrow though i think we got a good uh, aflac fusion for tomorrow so uh we'll just go race we'll look forward to bringing that one to you fans as well carl edwards second today well and we mentioned earlier uh, the owner points uh, well it was 30 coming in it is now down to four and you notice gibbs and penske between the two of these teams they have now won 14 of the last 18 nationwide races. And Dr. Jerry Punch is with the man who finished third, Kyle Busch. After what had been a frustrating weekend, Kyle Busch uh, manages somehow, Kyle, to come back and bring this car into the top five. What, take us through that last pit stop and that charge toward the front. Uh, just four tires was pretty good there at the end, but, uh, you know, can't thank Jason and the guys enough. I mean, they, they did work their butts off all weekend, and we missed it pretty bad. We didn't have a a third place car at all. I mean, uh, we just fought all day and tried to do the best we could with the Z-Line Designs Camry and gave it a run for the money there at the end, but uh, just real unfortunate that we're so far behind on the COT program. What happened with you and Carl? You guys are side by side those last couple laps. Looked like you might get him and he comes back and you come forward? Ain't nothing but side drafting at Michigan. Same old stuff. And what happened with the splitter? I know you guys had some issues like mid-race. Yeah, just uh, when you drag it, you wear it out and you don't have any more front downforce. All right, Kyle Busch charging back for a top five. <laughs> and Doc, Danica Patrick brought it home 27th. I know that uh, this may not have been the run you were looking for, but how would you assess it? 
Um, I guess I'm kind of glad I just uh, held on to it for the first half of the race. It was very hard to drive. I mean, I just, it was loose all the way around, getting in in the middle, getting off. I felt like I was just tiptoeing around out there, and uh, it's, it's a shame. We really, you know, the... Uh, the Hot Wheels car was good all weekend. It really was. And I really wanted to do well. It's the uh, their paint out for the year for me. And uh, it had just been going well. We were in the top 20 the whole time, all weekend practice. Qualifying, we, we had a little loose moment, like I said earlier, that would have uh, put us still up there in the top 20 again. And, you know, I think by the end of the race, we were kind of running those kinds of laps. But it just, you know, we were just so loose to start that we weren't able to uh, to stay up there. And, you know, unfortunately, it's the, it's, you know, it's kind of the way it's been for me this year. The first half of the race, I learned what I need for the last half of the race. So I think needless to say, we're going to tighten it up a whole bunch for the next one so that we can uh, at least just run. I mean, if it was tight, I could have at least run around the top and just, you know, use the wall to drive around. But uh, it was just... It was really loose. <laughs> well, Doc, at least you got to love the attitude. Danica still has a smile on her face. The next time she'll be on the track in the Nationwide Series, Dover. And that should be a fun one for her as well. Now, I'm with Justin Allgaier, and Justin, the day finished fine, but began poorly. Tell us what happened on lap two. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, I kind of misunderestimated the splitter on this car and the downforce the way they were. And, uh, you know, Ryan Newman somehow or another got into the fence, and I was right behind him. And, and had the wheels cut left, it was just still going right. But all in all, it was a great day, great day for the Verizon Dodge Challenger. Uh, I couldn't be happier at Penske Racing and Dodge for debuting this new car. It's just a, a lot of fun to run, and Nationwide does such a great job with this series. I hope the fans enjoyed the race. And, just thank God for uh, giving me the ability to come on and do this. What are your impressions of the new car? Second time you've run it, and a lot of guys said the jury was still out for Daytona, but what do you think about it now? You know what? This car is awesome. Th that was probably one of the most fun races I've ever run, uh, short of winning the race at Bristol earlier this year. And, you know, i, I got to say congratulations to Brad and, and Dodge and getting in victory lane. We uh, we should have been in victory lane in, at Daytona, and unfortunately we just couldn't seal the deal. So I uh, got in victory lane here, uh, two two top five finishes for, for Penske Racing and for Dodge. And, and I feel like that this car really kind of cleans the slate and, and opens up a a, a new avenue for all these teams to really work on and I feel like that all the guys at Penske Racing ought to hold their heads uh, very high this week because they did their job for sure. Well said indeed. Justin Allgaier fourth today and fourth in the points. Uh, Vince? Standing by with Paul Bernard. Another one of those Fords in the top five. A couple of them in the top five with Carl Edwards and uh, good day today. How was uh, how, how was it from your seat? It was a lot of fun. Um, our Mustang drove really good all afternoon. The, the guys at Roush Yates made uh, a little bit more horsepower for us this weekend. We uh, Ran up front all day. Is the cars are a lot of fun to drive. We didn't get as aero tight as what you get with the with the old style cars. I felt, and they suck up really good. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. You can run up top, get good runs on people, then pass somebody, then they stick right with you because you're drafting. It's it's a lot of fun. Really proud of the guys. Uh, awesome pit stops. Pusher and the boys did a really good job um, all weekend. I hit the wall yesterday. They fixed it, and uh, had a good car. Yeah, these guys have really done a nice job of late. Uh, Paul Menard finishing fifth today in the 98. And at the beginning of the day, we mentioned about six of the top eight were nationwide regulars, and three of them were on the young side, like 18, 19, and 21 years old. We'll talk to some of those guys when we come back. First, let's talk about what's happening later tonight. Lucas Oil NHRA Nationals qualifying tonight, and Ashley Force Hood, number one, going into today's round of qualifying and Funny Car. Finals tomorrow at 10 Eastern, both on ESPN2. Then NASCAR Spring Cup Series action, the Carfax 400, right here from Michigan International, tomorrow at 1 Eastern on ESPN with NASCAR countdown starting at noon eastern and then we'll have the nationwide series under the lights at bristol oh yeah we're going to bristol friday 7 eastern on espn so as the trophies presented and the fans start filing out getting ready for tomorrow's race we'll be back with a lot more as we mentioned we'll talk to some of the young guns We continue our post-race coverage of the Carfax 250 at Michigan. Make sure to go to NASCAR.com for all your latest NASCAR information. And as the Victory Lane celebration continues, we remind you to go to Goodyear.com and show your thanks and help support our troops Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Good to have the blip with us today here at Michigan International Speedway. And inside the pit studio with Rusty and Brad, uh, listening to some of the post-race interviews from the drivers on this second race of the next generation car, uh, two things stand out to me. A lot of guys saying fun to drive. That's good. 
But like we talked about before, it's so many unknowns and so much to learn for these teams before we see this car again at Richmond September 10th. Well, they're going to continue to stay learning. I mean, this car, is a, it, was, it was a lot of fun to drive, like everybody said, but they do have a lot of work to get them handling consistently. Most of the day, I heard everybody saying, I'm really loose. Even the fast cars were saying, I'm really loose. They've got to understand what's going on because a track like this is semi-close as uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and that's where we're going to see this car running the last race of the year. The next race is a short track, completely different, completely different setup, so these guys are at a huge learning procedure with this car right now. Yeah, they really are, and today is uh, one of the the, the second time they get an opportunity to build some data, build some notes, and go forward. We saw the race get spread out a little bit back in the pack, but we did see some pretty interesting racing up front. Oh, yeah. So, now, yeah, so there's a lot <laughs> to take out of it, the aero situations, how the car hits the splitter, a lot to learn, but I thought it was a good learning experience for all involved today. You know, I was thinking watching Brad Kozlowski celebrate in uh, Victory Circle today. Here he is, the guy with the big championship lead, picking up his fourth win of the season, his tenth win overall in this series. And wasn't it just a couple of years ago we were talking one of the new fresh faces is yep. coming to prominence at NASCAR's top levels. And now we're watching his car get pushed out of victory circle toward tech inspection after a big win. Had some other young guys whose names are just starting to come to prominence have good races today. One uh, is with Mike Massaro. And that, of course, being Ryan Truex, a career-best 12th place finish today, but kind of a dicey moment there in the closing laps. Brendan gone losing a motor right in front of you. What was that like? Uh, scary. <laughs> I couldn't see anything, and I pretty much just held on for dear life there, and almost I thought the race was over there, but you know I got it back under me and ended up with 12th, and I just had a lot of fun today. Uh, this car is really fun, a lot of fun to drive, and I learned a lot about aero stuff and how to side draft and take the air away from people and things like that. So it was a good day, and can't thank MWR and everyone enough for giving me this opportunity, and Nap Auto Parts for coming on, tow truck in a box, just everyone that's got me this far, and had a lot of fun today, and just can't. Can't say how much I appreciate everything everyone's done for me. No doubt, learning these cars a bit of a challenge. Uh, one of the challenges is always pit road for a rookie. What was it like trying to get out of your pit box today? Not good. <laughs> um, with these cars, they're really long gears, and first gear is really long. So I'm used to the short tracks where you got real short gears, and you can just dump the clutch and take off. And here, you got to really rev it up more. And I stalled at the first the first pit stop, and my brother came on the radio and told me. It taught me some stuff on how I can get out of the pit box better, and it helped. So, got to thank him for that, and uh, just a good day. What types of things? I know you communicated with your brother throughout the course of the weekend. What types of things did you discuss that helped you today? Uh, what I said before about you know, learning the air, that, that side of things, it's really a lot more important than I thought it'd be. When you get behind a car, it just picks your speed up so much, and you can do so much with the air, and others can take it away from you. And they, when you're following somebody, you'll lose the nose. So, I learned a lot today, and. I had a lot of fun with it, and um, you know, I was having fun racing up there in second for a while, following Keselowski, and we kind of dialed our car out a little bit, being the new, a new car, and we've never run it before. We weren't really sure what would work and what didn't work, so learned a lot today, and come back next time and hopefully be even stronger. Well, Vince, uh, get used to seeing this kid. I, I, I got the funny suspicion we're going to hear a lot more about Ryan Truex. Yeah, it's amazing when you talk to an 18-year-old there and a 19-year-old here with Trevor Bain, a guy that ran in the top five most of the day, ended up 11th. What happened there at the end? Well, that caution just killed us there at the end. I think our team, our Outpec Air Toyota, deserved the top five all day long. I mean, we were just so good on the long runs. Uh, short runs, we struggled. You know, we talked about it at the end of the day. Hey, if a caution comes out with 15 to go, we need to make some changes to make this car hook up. And we made an attempt at it. You know, we came down, took two or four tires just like Kyle did. He managed to get back to third, but we got caught in behind some other cars. And uh, the adjustments weren't all the way there. We were just way too loose at the very end of the race and uh, kind of like it was the beginning on short runs. So we needed that long run at the end. Too bad it wasn't about 40 more lap race because we'd have been there again uh, that that car was just really strong I was so proud of everybody Diamond Walter Brayson for the the new car that they gave us this weekend uh, everybody's kind of coming into these races blind but to finish in the top 12 with 12 with both the cars I mean that says something for the whole operation there at one point when you were racing with Kyle he radioed in and said the 99 is loose fast and that's the way he wanted to be Maybe give a little description of what that feels like when you're the man in the seat of a loose fast car it feels great because you're going by everybody you know that's the best time of the day 
day for us was when we could run the top, be loose about the time we got by Kyle, and we were still fast. Uh, and that's what these cars you have to have in them. You know, they've got enough side force to hold it, and that's what we had to learn on the test day here Thursday. Every time we try to tighten up the car because it felt loose, we'd slow down. So these things just have to be sideways, and you got to learn how to drive them. It's a new experience, but it's a lot of fun to be behind the wheel behind one. How well do you feel like you have a handle on it now after spending this weekend? Having a top five car, you didn't get the top five result, but it's got to be encouraging as you go to the next stop. I, I got to be honest. I was a little worried going into the race, but to run uh, top five all day and be battling with Cub drivers who have a lot of experience in this style of car says a lot for our team, and it says a lot for the learning curve that we've picked up here. Um, you know, I think that I think we're going to be pretty tough to handle, hopefully. I don't want to speak too soon, but I think our team's done a great job so far, and they're going to continue to do that. Looking forward to Bristol next weekend, going back to our home track where we were really strong last time. So hopefully we'll have a good stretch of races here coming up. Trevor Bain, 11th today, but a, even a better run than an 11th place finish would indicate. Uh, Vince, I'll tell you what, every time I listen to the, that young man, every time I talk to him, all I can think of is he's going to be big oh, man. in this business. He's already fast. Yeah. You know, he's learning. He's, he spent the, the first part of the year getting all the mistakes out of the way. You know, we tore a few race cars here and there. But I've talked to cup drivers about him, and they all say the one thing about him is he's got that thing, and that is fast, and he's going to be really good. He's got a lot of confidence, and that's what you got to have. He's got speed. He's got confidence. He's got what it takes to win races on a consistent basis. And like he said today, a big morale booster for him to be able to compete against those cup guys. I think if he takes anything out of today, he's going to go back and say, hey, I ran with those guys. I was running side by side with them. They didn't blow my doors off. And, man, am I loving this new car because it got me in the hunt. And, you know, the, the reality is that's what this Nationwide Series does best. Yeah. Uh, people talk about cup drivers in the Nationwide Series and, and should there, shouldn't there be, and all that kind of thing. But think about what Trevor Bain just said. At 19 years old, by yeah, the way, yeah, the grand old age. he got the chance to get out there and race against Carl Edwards sure. and Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick on a track like this today, and he learned so much from this. And it's such a, a, a great uh, opportunity for these young guys that this series still presents even though the economic times are tight and it's harder for an owner yeah. to give a young driver a shot that's still the benefit of this series for them is the experience they get against these guys well I can't argue that point whatsoever I and mean, you have you have certain days that are magical days no doubt about that most of the time the cup guys put it to you but every now and then you put it to them like happened to Trevor today he had a great run and this is something that's sticking with him you know hope he can keep that momentum up but like I said a little earlier when we we're talking this particular car the next time it's gonna run is on a short track Richmond, over yeah. in Rich Virginia now Richmond yeah. Virginia that's totally different guys yeah. but then we're gonna go to Charlotte North Carolina another mile and a half which is a totally different mile and a half which we just ran today so a lot of changing things with this new car but I like what NASCAR did with the schedule they kind of moved around all these different tracks to give all these guys a snapshot of what they're gonna need for next year I, I, I know what you're trying to say but I can I can hear people saying to you right now this is a two mile track but it's the same style two mile track two miles. to me it drives like a mile right, half and I same. apologize I didn't make it <laughs> keep the emails and keep the hate mail back with you. Uh, no, 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 no. But this, it's the same style of track to a yeah. driver and a team right yeah, so that's right. Exactly. That's right. and here's something else Trevor said he can't wait to get to Bristol That'll make him close to your heart. Uh, be a lot of people can't wait to get to Bristol next week. And uh, as we check out the upcoming races for the NASCAR Nationwide Series, yeah. look at the variety of tracks. Man, look there. at that. We're going to Bristol. We're going to short track. We're going to road course. We're going to one of the fastest race tracks in all of racing, Atlanta Motor Speedway, and then back to the short track. Then the Monster, baby. We're going to get a little bit of everything in there. <laughs> Join us at some of the races. Get you some. you find out. There you go. More post-race coverage from Michigan in a minute. <laughs> Carfax 250 in Michigan is brought to you by Carfax. Free in your used car dealer. Just say, show me the Carfax. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. And Viagra. The interviews and photos continue for the race winner, Brad Keselowski, at Michigan International Speedway. Home state win for him. It was not a trouble-free day as we go back upstairs to Marty, DJ, and Andy. It's the first time that Brad Keselowski has won from the pole in his 10 victories in the Nationwide Series. But this could have turned into a real disaster. I mean, they dodged a couple of bullets on pit road. Yeah, dodged a major bullet right here. You see, has a problem getting this car going with the clutch uh, not engaging or disengaging properly, and he loses one spot on pit road. This one under green, he lost some time on pit road and actually lost four or five spots. That, had they not had a caution, it would have been hard to make up. Yeah, what he was actually having to do was put the car in gear and then hit the starter to, to make it go that way because the clutch was of no use to him whatsoever. Still couldn't even do it at the end of the race. So to explain more, let's check in at the Craftsman Tech Center with Tim Brewer. 
Thanks, guys. You know, we've got hydraulic clutches in the cars that activate the system. But when the driver actually pushes the pedal in, he's going down like this. Now, the guys like that clutch to engage coming off about right here. But when he had the problem, he's going to have to go back and work the pedal ratio out with the master cylinder itself. But I'll tell you what a lot of people don't know. He actually came in, knocked the car out of gear. And when the left side of the car came down, Brad would reach up, cut the ignition switch off, cram it in first gear, hit the ignition, hit the starter, and that's what got him out of the pit. And might I add, he was pretty good at it three times. He certainly was, and there it is after heading for post-celebration. Let's quickly check in with eighth place, uh, Reed Sorensen. Doc? Yeah, Marty, another top ten for the 32 car. Reed, how was your day? It was a pretty good day. We uh, started out, the car was really, really good the first run, uh, moving through the field. And uh, after that, our second run was good. And then I, I think after that, we may have had a tire go down. So uh, overall, good day for the Dollar General car. I think we were the best non-cup affiliated team. So just proud of all the guys. And uh, we'll just take what we learned from here, since this is, a, this is kind of our only test, and uh, kind of translate it into to Charlotte and uh, apply what we learned today. So just real proud of the DG team. and. Uh, like I said, we're the, the best non-cup affiliated team, so I'm happy about that. 13th top 10 of the year. Dave. Doc, one of the new guys in the new nationwide car, Ricky Stenhouse, finished 13th today. Sum it up for me. It was uh, a long day. It was uh, We were really tight, center off, uh, getting on the throttle. Could never really get the handle of it, but uh, our six uh, Ford Mustang uh, ran really well, uh, qualified really good, and uh, just glad to come home with a, with a decent finish and uh, looking forward to getting City Financial back on the car at Bristol with uh, the Ford Fusion. And a whole race car today. That's a strong statement by this team today. Alan. All right, David, thank you. And a reminder that ESPN's coverage of Major League Baseball continues tomorrow night with an NL East game from City Field in New York. Raul Labanez and the Phillies take on David Wright of the New York Mets on ESPN Sunday Night Baseball at 8 Eastern. Game also available on ESPN3.com. And uh, speaking of Sunday, we look ahead now to tomorrow's NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race, 1 Eastern, the Carfax 400 on ESPN. Our coverage starts at noon Eastern with NASCAR Countdown. Casey Kane and Jimmy Johnson on the front row. Can Casey keep it going in a lame duck situation, and can Jimmy kind of get back on track? Well, I think Casey can keep it going. I mean, as a driver, you don't know about all this stuff going on outside the car. You just want to win. He's got a big engine. He's got a good car. He's on the front row, Brad. Yep. This cat can absolutely win. He absolutely can, but when that white flag falls tomorrow, you better be looking for that 33 car. He's going to have a great race tomorrow. I got a feeling. Clint Boyer. Yep. Clint starting in third. Kevin Harvick in studio guest during NASCAR countdown. The only guy who can clinch a place in the chase on Sunday. And again, that starts at noon Eastern with countdown the race at 1 Eastern, the Carfax 400 on Sunday from here at Michigan International Speedway. Weather forecast pretty good last time I checked it. So we'll look forward to a great day of racing here in the Irish Hills of Michigan. Michigan native Brad Keselowski celebrating a win today. ESPN News is coming up next. And uh, after Keselowski celebrates this one, he'll regroup and be back with us tomorrow for the Sprint Cup race for Michigan. ESPN News is next. Thanks for watching.